Ah yes, first person shooters on a CRT, 1998 vibes, brings back memories of Quake, Unreal, Duke Nukem, wait, wait, was that Splitgate? And, and Battlefield? What? Believe it or not, a fair bit of gamers still play modern games like it's the 90s on a CRT. Why? It comes down to two reasons, motion clarity and input latency. Due to the way CRTs scan lines with light shooting from the back to the front of the glass and fading by time the scan starts again, there is zero added motion blur during movement. LCDs on the other hand function by means of shifting pixels from one frame to the next. It's called sample and hold, and there's always some blending and blurring between them. This means that in a fast-paced action game or first-person shooter, even at high refresh rates, it can be more difficult to determine exactly where an enemy is or where you're aiming compared to a CRT. I have a full section of a video essay on my main EposVox channel dedicated to nerding out on this if you want more, but suffice to say, unless you're gaming on an OLED with black frame insertion on, it doesn't even begin to compare. The same can be said for input latency. In twitchy first-person shooters, reaction times are crucial to high performance, and CRTs have quite literally zero added input latency. While LCD marketing will often quote 0.5 or 2 milliseconds response times as latency numbers, the actual input latency while gaming is always significantly higher, and it doesn't come close to the whipping around you can do and the accuracy you can achieve on a CRT. I still remember my first time really experiencing high refresh rate gaming having an impact on my first person shooter gameplay. It was Halo Combat Evolved. Eventually I discovered that you could turn off the 30 FPS cap and just support it to V-Sync, which on the CRT monitors we had at the time was 75 Hertz. And oh my god, it felt so much smoother. My mind was blown. I was trying to show my dad at the time and he didn't understand because it just looked the same when you're not expecting it and my performance improved markedly. I know monitors are moving to be wider and wider these days to a ridiculous degree, and ultra-wides can be nice for certain forms of gaming, but I always find the sacrifice in vertical space to be frustrating. A 1440p ultra-wide is just a 4K panel chopped down with a bit trimmed off the sides as well. I'm writing this script on a massive 34-inch 21x9 ultra-wide right now, and I really feel like the height of the monitor is lacking and limiting. But then again, I've always enjoyed 16x10 monitors for productivity too. Ultra-wide is great if you get real close on it and want immersive periphery vision for space travel, racing, or adventure games, but with a first-person shooter, I want as much useful information shoved directly in front of my eyes as possible so I can make the best decisions with it. 4x3 just gets me there. I really enjoy gaming in 4x3. I get a nice square field that, when at the right angle, eats up most of my usable vision that matters and I can focus a lot better. Maybe it's an ADHD thing, maybe it's a boomer thing, but it's just so damn good. Splitgate, Battlefield 4, Halo, they all just rule in 4x3. I'm already a really solid player in Splitgate as it is, but I'm significantly better playing with no input latency on these chonky displays. Not all games support 4x3. Overwatch and Apex Legends will let you play on a 5x4 or 4x3 screen, but you still get letterboxing as they only let you render the game in 16x9, 16x10, or ultra-wide. This feels regressive as we should be moving towards a, you know, a more broad arbitrary aspect ratio, resolution, and refresh rate support in games with how weird monitors keep getting. But Apex still hasn't added a center HUD option for ultra-wides after all this time. So, guess it's just not a priority. But yeah, 
It's hard to argue with playing on a display that literally gets out of your way and lets you get your crosshairs where you need them as seamlessly as possible. Plus, there's the static, the glow, and the fact that most of them can run some resolution at 120Hz, with 75Hz generally being the default on displays that you can get for free most of the time. I'm happy to stay in my little 1998 bubble while playing modern games that will still let me. If you want to learn more about why CRTs are rad as hell, click the video linked below. And let me know if you've used a CRT recently in the comments and consider picking one up if not. Remember, be kind, rewind.
that silverware to the pile. 